Before we start this video, large thank you to Joel, Yusuf, Callian, John, Itty, Matthias, Than, YH Kim, S, and Jeremy for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello guys, and today we're going to do input and action queuing. So what is that? Well, I'm going to show you with an example. Uh, right now we have combo set up, but if you don't press the combo button, let's say right bumper, for example, right on the perfect frame, you basically can't perform the combo until you hit it. So if you press it a frame late, it'll perform the frame late. You press it three frames late, you'll do it three frames late. So you can see right here we have these animation events, uh, but all the way over here we have enable can do combo. What I'm trying to say is if I press it before, it won't count. And if I press it after, I've missed my opportunity to do it as soon as possible. Do you get what I'm saying? So what we want to do is if we press it here, we want it to remember it when we get here. And this is what makes the game feel a lot more fluid and nice because it, it's kind of like remembering your inputs for you for a little bit and then processing them. It knows what you want to do and it's acting at that action after. It's actually quite simple to do it uh, the way I'm going to show you. I've, I've adjusted this from the project that I use it for because I need to do a few more bits of extra logic. But for just memorizing attacks and consuming objects and rolling, it's very, very straightforward. So I'll show you. First thing you want to do is make a queued version of every input you want to be able to queue. So for example, right bumper is the one I'm going to use for the video example. I'm only going to do one as I usually do this tutorial. I just want to show you how to do it. I'm not going to do the whole project for you. Um, but if I show you how to do one, the logic is the same with every other uh, input as well. So let's go to the player actions and duplicate RB, right bumper. And I'm going to call the duplicated right bumper queued RB. Um, and it's going to be identical, that's very important, to the regular button. So make sure all your interactions and processes, if you have any, are the same. Uh, and then down here on enable, we're going to do something a little bit different. Before we actually put it in, we're not going to change a bool. Instead, we're going to use it to call a function when it's pressed. Um, if you know you could do that with uh, those inputs, it's pretty cool. So let's go down here and make a private void. Uh, let's call this uh, let's call this Q input. Let's pass a reference of a bool. This is important. Make sure you use the reference keyword uh, and call it queued input. What's the difference between reference value? I'm sure many of you know this, but reference passes the actual bool itself, whereas just passing a regular bool will pass the value of the bool. We want the actual bool itself because we're going to change the actual bool in here. Uh, so I'm just going to say right here, we want to disable all other queued inputs. So if you press uh, RB, for example, and you have queued LB, queued LT, and queued RT as examples, then the first thing you want to do is disable all of those other examples right away because you only want to be able to queue one input at a time. And pressing a new queued input should disable all other queued inputs. You don't have to do this, but you're going to get some weird behavior if you don't. Uh, so now below that, what you want to do then is enable the referenced input. That's why you pass reference. So if you're passing the queued RB by reference, then we can actually change that bool because we're referencing the actual bool and not just the value of it. So instead of getting true or false, we're getting the actual bool itself and then we're turn turning it to true. And what we want to do is make sure we only do this when the player is interacting, because if we're not interacting, then we don't need to queue an input because we can just perform a regular uh, input action. If we're attacking or drinking a potion or we're, we're trying to spam the dodge button while we're dodging already, then we are interacting and then we can cue the input to be performed as soon as it can be. So we want to not let this go on forever though too. So we also need to make uh, a timer to let you know how long your inputs should be able to be queued. And it's actually really quick in Souls. It's not that long at all. Um, I'd estimate like a third of a second. So what I'm going to do here now is uh, yeah, just make sure you change the queued input up here to true in here. So if we reference the RB input, it changes in here using the reference. So, and then right above uh, uh, the queued RB input up here, I'm just gonna put a public float for current queued input timer. And I'm gonna take a sip of tea. I'm gonna put a public float for default queued input time. And this is the default time of how long an input will last as it is queued. And the timer is how much time is remaining. So we can say uh, current queued input timer equals default queued input time. This is when we do have an input queued. And we need to notify the game that we do have something ready to be queued. So let's make a bool for that. And I'm going to call mine public bool uh, input has been queued. Very self-explanatory. And then right below here, let's say input has been queued is equal to true. Now, we want to make a function then that does some logic and runs on update if we have an input queue. But before we do that, let's go to on enable. And right at the bottom here, I'm just going to simply say input actions dot player actions dot queued rb uh, dot performed is going to be plus equals i equals greater than 
and then we're going to pass our new function instead. So that's Q input. And then we're going to pass a reference to the input of Q RB. So the, the bool we just made. So basically, again, it will activate this function. It will disable all other queued inputs, and it will turn the reference we passed, which is the queued RB input, to true, making it the only input that is queued right now. And then we set our queued input timer to the default input time, and then we want to run this function on update. So private void handle queued inputs. And what we want to do is open up some curly bracers here. And the first one to check for is if an input has been queued. If an input has been queued, which it should be, if we processed one from that function, then we want to check the time. We're going to say if queued input timer is greater than zero, we want to deduct queued input timer minus or equals queued input timer minus time dot delta time. So it just goes down and reframe by the second. And then outside of this, we want to say else. We want to say input has been queued equals false. And then we want to say queued input timer equals zero. All right, so we want to put one more function here. Inside here, we want to say try and process the queued input. And this is if the timer is greater than zero and has not ran out of time. So for that, we can just make a private void here. And we can just call that quite simply process queued input. And this is very, very straightforward. All you want to do inside this is take every queued input you have and relate it to its regular input. So I'm just going to say process queued input, and I'll show you what I mean. So for example, we have queued RB right now. What I want, what you want to do is uh, say if queued RB input, then we want to say our tap RB input is equal to true. And that will keep making that true every frame until the timer runs out. Uh, and likewise, you only have one queued input, so every other input won't be true. And then you can do everything else, like if queued LB input, then we want to change tap LB input to true while the timer is above zero. And then the same thing for RT, LT, and uh, the roll or the dodge button. Uh, just do it all in here just like that. And only one of these can be true at one time because we're making sure to reset all other queued inputs when we pass our reference input. So it's, it's really that easy. Now, the only thing you gotta, you gotta be careful of is you gotta not make the timer too long. Uh, otherwise, you could have an input lingering on after an action has long ended. So usually queued action timers uh, will be like a third of a second, maybe a half of a second at most. It's That's plenty forgiving. That gives you time to basically just queue up the combo right before the animation event so you can perform the combo as early as possible. So now if I do the combo uh, right here, what you want to do is first actually is go to your player object if you haven't and set the time in the inspector. So I'm going to go down here and set it to uh, the default queued input time is 0. Dot, I'll try 0 0.3 or if you do 1, just I'll show you how, how this is going to linger around. You can see here that's almost too much. So I've tapped it once and I'm attacking it after the combo because the input is still staying queued. Um, but if I come down here and do say 0 0.35 or 0 0.5, we'll just try 0 0.5. And then go back to the game here. I press it and pressing it again, and there you go. Uh, I'm pressing it the second I'm attacking, and now you can't uh, hear that, but basically it's just performing, oh, random stamina that time. It's performing the combo as soon as it can. So you're not missing out on a frame where you can attack. I'm pressing the input way before I am able to combo, but the input is memorizing itself and carrying on into the um, can combo animation event. This makes it so there's no wasted frames and attacks, and you don't have to spam the button to get the attack off as soon as possible. Now, put on two seconds. Check this out. I'll show you. So I pressed it once, and you can see it goes for a third attack because it lingers on too long. Now, you could remedy this with some code uh, by deactivating it after a certain event, but you don't need to because, again, no action in your game really should be a third of a second. So if you're using 0.3 seconds, um, you're fine. But you can expand the logic, as I said, and really just deactivate um, the input after the action is processed. Uh, anyway, I'm going to show you just one last example here. So we go to the animation just to really hit this home uh, so no one's confused. Go down to the light attack, and what you want to do is check out the enable can do combo animation event. So if I press the input, say, uh, this is the can do combo, by the way. If I press the input right here, then by the time it gets to the enable can do combo, because the input queue is repetitively putting RB to true, it's doing it instantaneously for me. So I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, just drop them in the comments. I can explain it further if you'd like. This is a very simple version of how to do an input and action queue system, and I believe for this project, it is the best way to go about it. Uh, you can add on to this. You can add more logic to this and make it more complex. But as it stands for attacks and like item actions, this is a, a very good way to do it. 
Now we have queued inputs and the inputs should feel a whole lot smoother and attacking should feel more responsive and it should just feel a lot more fluid. Like this very small thing adds a lot to the actions in the game. I find it is a, uh, a very much needed thing, especially in a Souls-like genre. So thank you for watching, guys. A special thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you all so much. I will see you in the next 20 minutes. Fire, don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment. It does genuinely help out the series so much. You have no idea. And I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you all have a great weekend.